Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on stem. So now we will start talking about leaf which is again an, a very very important part of the plant. In fact, leaf is the organ which performs photosynthesis and photosynthesis is an indispensable part of a plant. When we are talking about plants and if we are not talking about you know, photosynthesis, then it is useless talking about plants because photosynthesis is the process by which plants get their food. And if they don't get their food, they will not exist. And leaves are the primary organs involved in photosynthesis. So now we will have a detailed discussion on leaf. So the first thing that comes to our mind is what is leaf? As far as what we can see from the perspective of the structure, we can say that leaves are nothing but green lateral flattened structure born on stem nodes. So on the stem you have these nodes. So at the stem nodes are born green flat structures which are called leaf. They are the most important organs for photosynthesis. So that's what I told. I mean, it, is, it becomes very, very important to talk about leaf. Even though at each and every part of the plant, even a plant cannot be complete without a root or without stem. So everything is important. But as far as photosynthesis or food preparation is concerned, leaves play the most important role. So now we will talk about the various parts of a leaf. Lamina, petiole, leaf base are the three important and the three most basic parts of a leaf. So now looking at the structure of a leaf, let us see which part is called lamina, which part is called petiole and which part is the leaf base. So lamina is basically this portion, the green expanded portion of a leaf which we actually see. That is the lamina. So this part of the leaf is lamina. So lamina is done. Petiole, which is what is a petiole? Petiole is nothing but a green colored stalk which actually holds the leaf or which attaches the leaf to the stem. So that stalk like structure is known as petiole. So basically, this structure is the petiole or the stalk which holds the leaf to the stem is petiole and the third part is leaf base that is the basal part of the leaf so the very base of the leaf or the point the point of the stem on from where the leaf arises that is the node that is called node so node is a part of the stem and the part of the leaf which attaches it to the node that is known as the leaf base so this becomes the leaf base so these are broadly the three parts of a leaf. So now we will talk about each of these parts in detail. We will talk about the function of each of these parts. Now let me tell you one more thing. When I talk about lamina, sometimes lamina is also known as leaf blade. So many people or in many books you will see that leaf blade and lamina are used interchangeably. Let us now talk about the different parts of a leaf in little more detail. So let us see what are those three parts, lamina, petiole and leaf base. So we will start our discussion with lamina. As I said, what is lamina? The green expanded part of the leaf which we can see. That is lamina which is often also known as leaf blade. So this is how your lamina looks like. So this entire green part of the plant or the leaf is lamina. So this entire portion is lamina. Now on this lamina you can actually see the small pores, extremely minute pores which are present uh, which are known as stomata and these stomata actually helps in exchange of gases. The cells of the lamina also contain chloroplast and chloroplast is the one which actually contains chlorophyll which in turn helps in the process of photosynthesis. So lamina has, a, I mean lamina is the most important part of the leaf because it contains chlorophyll, again it contains stomata which helps in gaseous exchange. Veins and veinlets are present on the lamina. Now when I say veins and veinlets, 
So the, these are the veins. You can see these lines. So these are the veins. You can further see that these lines further get subdivided into more lines. So these are called vein, veinlets. Right? So veins and veinlets are also present on the lamina. Now we will see what do these veins and veinlets do. So basically the veins or the veinlets are nothing but they are uh, tube-like structures like when we talk about the human body we talk about arteries and veins right so what do they do they are tube-like structures which actually help in circulation of blood throughout the body so similarly a similar type of function is performed by these tube-like uh, structures called veins and veinlets on the leaf blade so they are present on the lamina let us talk about the next part of the leaf that is petiole. Petiole is nothing but the leaf stalk. So this, this leaf stalk is petiole. Right? So what, what do you think would be the function of a petiole? Obviously it holds the leaf. Now only if the leaf blade is there, I mean something has to be there to hold it in place. So petiole does that job. Now if you talk about the appearance of petioles in different plants, we actually see that there are plants where the petioles are uh, quite long. There are plants where the petioles are quite short. In fact, we also do have plants where petioles are not at all present. So it is, it is not a mandatory part of a leaf. That means even if a petiole doesn't exist, the leaf, leaf can very well do its designated function. Uh, however, if a plant or if a leaf has a long thin petiole, it allows the leaf blades to flutter in wind. You would have actually seen that when there is a, when air blows or when there is wind blowing, what happens? The leaves keep moving, right? Why does that happen? That's because of that long petiole. The longer the petiole, the more fan-like structure the leaf will have and it will move more. So this petiole is a flexible thin structure and because of its flexibility, as I said just now, it is because of this flexibility that the leaves actually flutter in wind. It also helps, now since it is flexible, it again also helps the lamina to be present in the correct orientation towards light. Because as I said, lamina is that part of the leaf which contains chloroplast. And chloroplast contains chlorophyll, right? And chlorophyll is something which is necessary for photosynthesis and photosynthesis is the process which provides food to the plant. And that is a mandatory thing, correct? So now, we actually need to take care of the fact that the lamina always is in the correct orientation to light so that the leaf blade or uh, the chlorophyll and the sunlight can actually react with each other so that photosynthesis can take place. So petiole performs another important role in keeping the lamina at the correct orientation towards light so that photosynthesis can happen. Okay, now as I said, there are leaves with petiole, there are leaves without petiole as also. So this petiole basically holds the leaf blade. Let us look at. So here you can see different types of plants with different types of petiole. So here you can see the leaf stalk. This is the this is petiole. So now let us look at the type of leaves with and without petioles. So now, there are basically two types of leaves. One type of leaf is cysine and the other one is petiolate. So one type is cysine and the other type is petiolate. Now I'm very sure that the name are self-explanatory petiolate that means a leaf with a petiole so these are with petioles this is side means without petiole so when you 
think of examples of sessile leaves that is the leaves where you do not see the leaf stalk you can very easily think of grass so in grass you can actually see the leaves but do you ever see the leaf stalk you we, we don't really see the leaf stalk so they are examples of sessile leaves whereas there are leaves with petioles i mean in fact i think most of the plants which you see around yourself they are mostly petiolate so for example look at this plant this is an example of petiolate now talking about society it is not only the grass which is an example even so grass is one example even the monocotyledonous plants like corn is another example here do you see the petiole see this is the leaf right this is the stem and this is the leaf do you see a stalk like structure no right so there is no stalk like structure present so there is no petiole so this is again an example of sessile leaves so based on whether the petiole is present or not a plant can be divided I and mean, the leaves can be divided into two types sessile leaves and petiolate leaves So let us now talk about the third um, part of a leaf that is the leaf base. As I said, it is the basal part that attaches the leaf to the stem. So first you have the leaf, uh, the lamina that is the green expanded portion. Then you have the stalk that is the petiole and then you have the leaf base that is the point where the petiole gets connected to the stem. So that part is leaf base. What is the it protects the axillary bud. So that is the function of the leaf base. It helps because even the axillary buds will be present at the axle of the leaf or it will, it will be present somewhere near the leaf base. So it basically protects that, protects the axillary bud. Now, uh, talking about the structure of the leaf base, like here in this plant, which you can see here, leaf base is like just the terminal end of the leaf stalk. You do not see it uh, distinctly or prominently right but there are plants for example the leguminous plants like beans there the leaf base is very swollen so you can distinctly see is it as a swollen structure and this swollen structure is given a new a different name and that name is pulvinous let us see so this is how a leguminous legume plant look like so in these kind of plants the leaf base is swollen so if you look at these kind of plants these are the leaves so on the leaves you will have the petioles and if you look at the base of the petioles they are quite swollen structures so they are known as legumes swollen leaf base and this swollen leaf base is known as pulvinus Again, in some other type of plant, for example, if you take the example of grass, what happens in grass? We In grass, we see the leaves. We do not see the leaf stalk or the petiole. So where is the leaf base? In grass, if you closely look at the grass, the base of the leaf forms a sheath-like structure. Like you will see that this base actually forms a folded, folded kind of a structure. From where it arises so if you go to go deep down to the base from where the leaves are uh, getting originated you will see that it forms a sheath like structure so here in case of grass you have sheath like leaf base so the structure of the leaf base again differs from plant from one type of plant to another type of plant So let us now talk about few other important structures of a leaf. So we will now talk about stipules. So this is a new name, right? I did not talk about it when I introduced the different parts of a leaf. So then let us see what are stipules. These are small leaf-like structures which are present on the leaf base. Just try to imagine a plant which you generally see in your house, any plant, where you can visualize or where you can see a leaf, you can see a leaf stalk, you can see at the bottom of the leaf stalk where you actually have the leaf base, there you can see very tiny leaf-like structures. 
I'm sure all of you would have noticed it or if you have not noticed it, you try to notice it. So those small leaf-like structures are known as stipules. Now the shape of the stipules are different in different types of plants. For example, here if I take the example of a plant called Smilax. So in Smilax, they have coiled stipules. So here in this picture, you can actually see the coiled stipules. You can see the green colored leaf which or the leaf blade. So from there you have these petioles or the leaf stalks. But at the base of the leaf stalks, you can actually see coil structures. So these are the coil stipules. Whereas if you take another example of a plant like Zyzephus, you can actually see that the stipules are spiny, that is they are spine-like structures. So here if you see, you actually have spine-like structures, thorny structures present. So they have spiny stipules. So not only these two examples, variety of plants have stipules in variety of different shapes. So they are stipules. So thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.